Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys of Magic. This is Hunter, Steven, and Shane. Say what up, guys. What up, guys? What up, nerds? We are back doing another episode of Commander Grades. That is right. Going through the pre-con legendary creatures from Bloomboro. If you guys haven't already seen the other grades of the other legendaries, check the description. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, all of those videos are out. Check the other ones, too. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We will talk about this first deck, which was Animated Army. It was helmed by Bello, Bard of the Brambles. It is one, a red, and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature, a Raccoon Bard. It says, during your turn, each non-equipment artifact, non or enchantment you control with mana value 4 or greater is a 4-4 elemental creature in addition to its other types and has indestructible haste. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That is a lot stapled onto that card. If you guys have already seen, we've done the $100 and $300 upgrades to this deck. Check the description for those videos. Check them out. But yeah, Bellow the Bard, I had the chance to upgrade this. And let me tell you, it's a lot of fun. I, I actually like Bellow a lot. Um, just being able to animate essentially, name of the deck. Uh, all those equipment or non-equipment, non-aura, enchantments, and artifacts is pretty cool. However, once Bello dies multiple times, it gets pretty sad because Bello really needs to be at the helm on the field to really do anything. Otherwise, you got some cool artifacts, I guess. Very true. But if you don't die, my goodness. The, what did we say? It was like the Crash Bandit coming out and just attacking with all of its Crash because you played him. Even's like, I completely forgot. And then, yeah, yeah it, could, it could be a little sneaky if people aren't paying attention because it's nuts. Yeah, because board wipes essentially don't do anything to this deck. I mean, yes, Bella will die. Cast Bella again, all of your stuff is back alive swinging. Yeah. So. Yeah, this card's pretty oppressive. Um, comes down super early, super cheap, and then it just gives all your stuff haste. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could really just build this as a ramp deck where you get to just play all your stuff, and then you can just cast Bellow as almost like a crater hoof in a weird way. Um, it's just kind of fun. It's very, it's a very interesting way to build the deck for sure. Yeah, definitely. Anything yet? Cool smash, dude. Cruel smash, indeed. Let's go ahead and move straight into the grades. I will kick us off. Bellow is a B for me. I like it. I saw you doing that. I like him as well. I'm going to give him a B. I'll give him a B as well. Well, Bellow, Bard of the Brambles, gets a B. A lot of Bs there. The backup to Animated Army is Wild Seer Scouring Maw. It's three red green for a six six legendary creature elemental wolf it's got trample and it says enchantment spells you cast from your hand have cascade oh boy this uh this is a card <laughs> yeah it's spicy it is spicy cascade is very good enchantments are very good enchantment tr like kind of theme decks steven as you know are very good so when you're able to go ahead and just cascade getting extra benefits from those enchantments, it snowballs very quickly. Um, Lots of varies there. Very. If you guys wanted to see this upgrade, it is exclusive on our Patreon. Check the Patreon link in the description as well. But I, once again, upgraded this deck the way I wanted to see fit. Obviously, it's a little different because Bello cares about artifacts instead, so it kind of gutted that, put enchantments, and it hums. Um, this card's nuts. Yeah. It's definitely different than the face commander, but I, I think going into this, I was under the impression that they would play a little differently. But after seeing them both, they, they honestly don't, in my opinion. Like, they both are nuts, dude. Like, you played tons of enchantments, they cascaded into more enchantments, and then you had just a board of enchantments that you sometimes got to attack with. Because let me tell you, Bellow's still on this deck. So, this was, this guy was nuts. Another nuts card. Yeah, it's good, good kind of synergies together i like it yeah i mean wild seer does the thing for sure uh having bellow in the deck is very beneficial because you know the way hunter built it there's a ton of card draw as you kind of see in enchantment style decks 
and it's gruel. So, I mean, you're basically just smashing, drawing cards, making your things huge, smashing more. And by the third smash, everyone's not there. <laughs> I mean, third smash, dude. That's, it could be like the first smash, you're not there anymore. It could be aggressive when you turn your 6-6 six, six into a 12-12 double strike. That's, that could be kind of nuts. Yeah, that's pretty easy to do. Um, there's a lot of enchantments in the in the deck I made that kind of give double strike, kind of give double the damage. It's aggressive. Five mana for a six six is just already good. Plus trample, that's, you're just automatically going in for commander damage pretty much every time. Um, Steven, this is gruel and its enchantments. You have to love it, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, listen, I love enchantment style decks, but like. I just think that there's one enchantment style deck, and that's Goshintai, and Trines. it gives you five colors. Yeah, but I I play as straight enchantments. Um, but I mean, it, I love Gruul. Gruul is a very fun kind of way to play. You don't really care if your stuff gets killed because you just get to use your mana and play some more really expensive things to hurt people with. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's an insane deck, and I can't I can't not give it its props. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the grades. I will kick us off. I think this is super powerful. It's not something I normally would play, but I'll still give it credit, so I'm going to give it an A. Wow. I would agree that it's super powerful, but I'm still down on the B. Uh, any deck, obviously, we always say, you know, we don't want to use the it dies to removal thing, but even if Wild Tear dies to removal, that's not my concern. I just think that with the added exile effects that Magic has given us, one farewell and you are just absolutely decimated after a board state. Without a so, doubt in mind. For that being said, I think, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and just give this a B. Super strong. I think with a little bit more protection, if you had white in there to kind of like flicker, or at least phase out, maybe an A, but until then, it's going to be a B. Yeah. Well, Wild Seer gets the average grade of a B. Moving on to the Squirreled Away deck. That is right. It is the deck that David upgraded. If you guys haven't already seen that, check their upgrade down in the description for the $100 and $300. But unfortunately, they couldn't be here. But we will talk about these two as potential commanders. First up, the helm of the deck. It is Hazel of the Root Bloom 2 Black Green for a 3-5 legendary creature, Squirrel Druid. Has an ability we could tap it, pay to life, tap X untapped tokens you control, add X mana of any combination of colors. It also says at the beginning of your end step, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. If that token is a squirrel, instead create two tokens that are copies of it. Pretty interesting. What do you think, Shane? I think that everyone wanted a squirrel deck and potentially I think these guys could do some squirrel shenanigans. I just don't think that the support is there yet. I know talking to David a lot, there just weren't enough squirrels to make the critical number. Uh, granted, I know you can do shapeshifters. You can do other things that do squirrels. But I mean, you want to make squirrel tokens, right? And at the end of the day, Steven, there just wasn't the critical mass. But the top part, I do think is relevant because you don't need squirrel tokens to start making absurd amount of mana. So that part is pretty cool. I do actually love the part where it's like add mana of any combination of colors. Yeah. So even though this is only a two color deck, I think that's very cool how it's flexibility of you can just add five green and two black. I don't know. I like it. Um, obviously, I don't believe this is the most powerful squirrel commander out there. They put the most powerful squirrel commander in the deck, Chatterfang. Mm -hmm. This is uh, definitely you can put squirrels in it. You can make squirrel tokens but i think this is just a token deck i agree oh um, yeah 100 percent. i think this deck really revolves around you just making food and clues and some treasures every once in a while and i think that they knew that but they were like okay well, everyone wants a squirrel deck so we'll just add that little bit extra text at the bottom there like if it's a token you could have two of them because we didn't give you enough squirrels so we want to make sure you have at least a couple more mm -hmm. yeah all right, let's go ahead and move on to the grades for Hazel of the Root Bloom. I know David wasn't high on it. We're not going to put their grade here, but we'll put ours. Shane, what are you giving Hazel? I think for the mana shenanigans, I see a lane there, and I'm still going to give it middle of the road, so I'm going to give it a C. 
I think I'm going to join you there, Shane. I mean, I there's definitely a lane. I definitely see the lane. I just think that I when I saw this deck come out, I really wanted to see a squirrel deck, and I really wanted to see something that could take the spot of Chatterfang every once in a while, but it just did not do that for me. I'm going to go one lower. I think this is a D. Uh, I just kind of making one token, that's cool. <laughs> and you have to pay life and tap all those tokens. So like if you want the treasure route, you're not spending that treasure now that you tapped them down to make mana. I mean, you're still making the mana. But I, I don't know. Hazel for me is a D. The average grade for Hazel of the Root Bloom is a C. Moving on to the backup of the Squirreled Away deck, it is the Odd Acorn Gang. Three black green for a 5-5 legendary creature, Squirrel Warrior. It's got Menace, it's got Trample, it's got Reach. And it also says Squirrels you control have Tap, Target Squirrel gets plus two, plus two, and gains Trample until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. And whenever one or more Squirrels you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is a better Squirrel Commander. I agree. It's a little heavier, but it's got a relevant text. It's got a decent ability. Kind of slow because it's sorcery, but if you do have more squirrels on the board, this can start doing some damage. Plus, drawing cards, squirrel stealing combat damage seems good. It's going to follow the same negativity that I said, though, where they're just... There are squirrels, don't get me wrong. It's just going to look kind of awkward. It's not going to be the most humming, if that's the right one. You know I'm trying to say it's not like the best deck you could build. I think most powerful is what you're looking for. Sure, um, like I think it's very cool. I mean, five mana, about five, five minutes reach trample. That's really good on its own. Yeah. <laughs> um, then it just also gives itself card draw because it's a squirrel itself. Yeah. But the ability of tapping something at sorcery speed is really unfortunate. It can really open up to something with removal. I mean, if you wait a turn, you're like, okay, I got I got an army of squirrels. I'm going to give it to this one. I'm going to put all those onto the odd acorn gang. So you're tapping everything down, giving that everything plus two because it's got menace and trample and reach, and it's probably going to get in for damage. And then after you've done that all on sorcery speed, someone takes out the odd acorn gang, and now you're just wide open for attacks. Yeah, I tap one white mana, and then you're sad. <laughs> exactly. I know the argument, like you said before, Stephen, is the dice to removal. That is... The age-old argument is pretty much everything dies to removal, but this specifically at sorcery speed, I think, is just a little bit more susceptible. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. When I saw this card, I it just, it didn't do anything for me. Like, I, I just feel like nobody's building this deck. And if they are, it's not a deck that's going to pop up at any, like, super high power level tables. I don't think it would be the highest of levels, no. It is a very cool casual deck, and if you want to build this, I totally recommend you building it. And a matter of fact, we have built it. David went ahead and built it for our Patreon members. If you guys want to check it out, check Patreon. Link in the description. Um, but yeah, I think we can go ahead and move on to the grades. Steven, what are you giving the odd acorn game? Uh, this one I will go down to a D. Interesting. I actually am the opposite here. I'm going up to a C. And I'm going to stay right where I was at, at a C. Well, there we go. The Odd Acorn Gang gets the average grade of a C. Moving on to Peace Offering. That's right. It is the Group Hug Deck, helmed by Miss Bumbleflower. One green, white, blue for a 1-5 legendary creature, Rabbit Citizen. It's got Vigilance, and it says whenever you cast a spell, target opponent draws a card. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It gains flying until end of turn. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, you draw two cards. Jane, you upgraded the Peace Offering deck with Miss Bumbleflower. Once again, links in the description if you want to check that out. What do you think of Miss Bumbleflower? I have not had as much fun playing a deck in a long time, dude. I was, I said this a couple times in other videos, I was very hesitant. When we did the draw of who's going to upgrade what, I was like, great, I'm going to play the deck that doesn't really do anything, and you guys are going to have fun, and I'm going to help you guys. But that alone was so much fun, because yeah, you're helping people. It is group hug, but it is 
very aggressive for a group hug deck. If you get a couple key pieces going, you'll be dropping creatures that are huge and then giving all your creatures counters, some flying count. Like, you think that you're the sit back and hug, but you're the aggressively hug that people don't want. Like, it's, it was nuts, dude. It was so much fun. Do you mean like yeah. regular group hug? No, 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 no. <laughs> You, they, they, you said to yourself, normal group hug seems like an anaconda that slowly coils and then flips a turn or flips a corner and wins. This I don't feel like I ever let off the gas as a group hug the entire time I played this deck. I don't think you did either. Yeah, it was definitely aggressive, Shane. Um, it's pretty cool, though. I typically don't run group hug ever. And seeing you play this kind of put it in a perspective of, okay, can make things a little more group huggy but at the same time really hit i mean i think it's really fun i mean obviously you're letting your opponents draw a card so it helps them find those answers for themselves too so kind of helps when you're able to give your things plus one plus one counters and gain flying mm -hmm. to hurt them <laughs> uh <laughs> but yeah i mean miss bone flower is fun i mean a one five with vigilance is nothing to scoff at you know, got a big booty for defense so you can defend early on. And then, I mean, just adding counters is nuts. So I do enjoy it. Uh, as a plus one, plus one counter guy, that is actually really cool, too. Um, obviously, you're in the right colors to also proliferate. And yeah, but I am still so wary of giving my opponents card draw. Because I feel like that's bad. But I don't know. Make alliances. Be political. Fun, just do it. I had a good time. Do it, Miss Bumbleflower. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the grades for Miss Bumbleflower. Shane. I love her. I think she's fantastic. It's really hard to give Group Hug, in my opinion, a super high grade. But I'm giving her a super high grade. I'm giving her a B. Wow. You know, I like I said, still scared. It's gotta be middle of the road for me. Miss Bumbleflower is a C. I mean, it's definitely not a C. Um, it's not a high a or anything but it is it's a solid b i think i mean whether you build this low power or high power i think you're gonna have a good time there we go miss bumbleflower gets the average grade of a b moving on to the backup for peace offering it's mr foxglove we got a miss and a mister it's two a green a white and a blue or a three five legendary creature fox rogue got lifelink and it says whenever it attacks draw cards equal to the number of cards in defending players hand minus the number of cards in your hand if you didn't draw cards this way you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield pretty sweet chain yeah you built this on our patreon as well i did what do you think about mr fox glove couldn't think it's so much different it's not group hug it's very fun still but it's like these two going in the same deck i get that he has the draw advantage, but it was just nuts. Because, like, if you're trying to upgrade with Fox Glove in mind with the base deck, it felt very awkward because the deck was full of just, you know, helping your opponents, which you kind of don't really want to with this deck. I mean, at least I didn't want to. I didn't go down that route. Uh, the route I went down was I don't really I mean, okay, drawing cards is good. I'd much rather just drop huge cards out of my hand. So I'd much rather attack someone that has less cards than me when I have more cards, and then just be like, oh, you're something stupid, deal with this now. Yeah, it was, that part was really fun. Cheating in cards is always fun. And that's added bonus of if you can't drop big cards, play some stuff, and then draw cards. Like, it's got a very nice ebb and flow to it, and I, I thought it was really fun. Yeah, it seems pretty nuts to me. Um, just the ability of like, okay, I played all these mana rocks, I've ramped up everything, and now I don't have anything in my hand. I'll attack the player with seven cards. I will draw seven cards. True. <laughs> it's, uh, it just refills your hand immediately. It's really good. Mr. Fox Glove is cool. Uh, I mean, obviously, you do have to swing with it, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, it's a 3-5, so if you're not pumping it up, even though it's got a pretty big booty at some point during the game, it's going to die. Uh, which is kind of what I noticed a lot. And then when you go to your next turn to recast it, obviously you don't have haste, which is a little unfortunate. So you can't really get that next trigger. I think that's really my only like scoff at this card. Other than that, it's pretty solid. 
Yeah. Like Shane said, putting cards in for free are always fun. And putting in those huge creatures that you literally have to deal with before you even think about Mr. Foxglove is kind of like a priority. So it kind of eats up the spot removal and leaves Mr. Foxglove to let you refill your hand and drop something else later, which is pretty cool. I do like that fact. He's yeah. a sly fox, dude. He's a sly fox. Let's go ahead and move on to the grades. Shane, start with you. I did mention at the beginning that they were completely different decks in my opinion, but I'm giving them the exact same grade. I'm going to give it a B. I'm actually going to join you this time. Mr. Fox Club for me is also a B. I think I want to give Mr. Fox Club a C. I do want to give it a B just because obviously you're putting in these huge creatures, but at the same time, like you do have to swing with this and at some point it's going to die. I just, and I, I know we've already made the argument. I'm not saying that it's going to eat removal, but I it just, this deck really needs Mr. Fox Club out if you're not ramping too hard. I agree. So I think that's kind of where I'm at with a C. Is it removal? What? <laughs> uh yeah mr fox glove gets the average grade of a b and the final legendaries we're talking about come from family matters that's right it is helmed by zinnia valley's voice it is a blue red and a white for a one three legendary creature bird bard it's got flying and it says it gets plus x plus zero where x is the number of other creatures you control with base power one it also says the creature spells you cast have offspring too. Steven, you were the Thanks. one that upgraded the Family Matters deck. Once again, check the description for those 100 and 300 other videos. What do we think of Zinnia? I mean, it's really fun. Uh, cheap commander comes down super quick. It's got flying, which is really nice evasion. And essentially, you really care about having creatures with power one toughness. So... The really cool thing about that is it just cares about its base power. So you can put a ton of pump spells in this deck that are enchantments that are static that continuously help you out and make your creatures really big. Uh, I think it's a solid card. This can be very scary out of nowhere, hitting you for just the one, and then on following turns could easily swing in for 10, which is just crazy to me. And then also giving your creatures offspring too. So all your cool cards that with ETBs, you can just get a second ETB throw in some mm. stuff like Panharmonicon or some other doubling effects, and then you get three triggers pretty much every turn. Uh, this deck Fair really point. wants to stay low to the ground, which is my favorite part. I love just casting things like every single time and just getting more stuff out. Really resilient on board wipes, which is a super big factor for me too. Low to the ground, dude. This thing is soaring in the air. <laughs> <laughs> True. I think there's so many ways to build this deck. Um, it's really cool. Like, obviously, you do the token route. They all have base power one. You just continue to kind of make Zinnia the commander, if you will, um, to deal commander damage. Make it that way. Or you can make something like a round mirror box, put a bunch of legendary creatures and have them have offspring and they don't die to legend rule. That would be really cool, too. So just, I just like the amount of ways you can build Zinnia. Um, if I didn't get to the bard, because we do roll for uh decks i would have liked to upgrade this one because it does seem kind of my lane there jeskai commanders seem to be something i gravitate towards and this is kind of what i built in the last precon upgrade with kaith as the backup there that's why i'm the glad you didn't deck. get this card yeah you, you made mean, the exact same deck if it was this card so i'm glad maybe. you got to do something else but i think zinnia is really cool very i think giving all your creatures basically squad to make another creature of themselves is nuts, like you said. I don't know what else to say besides something you've already said. Really strong. Really strong. Um, yeah, but let's go ahead and move on to the grades then. For Steven, what are you giving it? Uh, I mean, just for the fact that it hits all of my boxes, low-cost commander, low-cost deck, you know, CMC-wise, and just really resilient to, you know, board wipes and just rebuilding your board. I, I mean, I'm just going to give this a card to B. Uh, definitely don't think it's a material, but a solid, solid B. You know, I do think it's a material, and that's why I'm going to give it an A. I love the fact that it pumps itself because it has base power one, so it's going to get it's going to be a two three the first time it swings. I think it's cool. I don't know if it's an A for me personally, but like Stephen alluded to, that it, it's very board wipe resilience. 
because they could just build up that board like crazy. Like, I think it's going to at least get a B. Yeah. Zinnia Valley's voice gets the average grade of a B. Moving on to the final legend we are talking about. It is the backup to Family Matters. It's Arthur Marigold Knight. Two blue, red, white for a 4-5 legendary creature, Mouse Knight. It's got haste. And it says when it and at least one other creature attack. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Return that creature to its owner's hand at the end of combat. Steven, you got a chance to go ahead and mess around with this and put it up on our Patreon. What would you think of Arthur? I mean, Arthur was really fun. Um, I think the one downside of this deck is you have to swing with at least another creature. So most of the time when I'm playing this or when I was gold fishing with it or just doing the Patreon games, I had this really small creature and I had Arthur and Arthur is a four or five, which is really solid. But then you have this really small creature. Now, granted, most of the time you're probably going to lose that creature and you get to put something else in, but then it gets bounced to your hand and you have to hope that you have mana to recast that. Um, so although it, Arthur is super fun because you can put something down and attacking but as you'll learn, if you just hit something that's small, like I did most of the time, it just dies as soon as you swing in, somebody blocks with it. So it can be very aggressive. It could be very bad. So it's got a super high ceiling and a really low floor. Yeah. You know what? Coming into this, I thought that Arthur was the stronger of the two being this and Foxglove just because I felt like in my little brain, they were kind of similar lanes. They wanted to cheat in creatures. But I do think Arthur is kind of restrictive now that hearing Steven just kind of talk about it again. It's just there's a whiff, which sucks there immediately. You've got to attack with something else. Granted, the card that I was comparing it to is slow and does nothing for a turn. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is a good card still. I still like it. I love cheating out cards. Very reminiscent of Kalia, which is a, hate, a hated deck that I love. Um, hmm. Obviously not as good, but say, cheating out cards and attacking seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the comparison, right, was a fair Winota. Um, this is not that great, in my opinion. I just don't like the fact that it has to attack with another creature for it to trigger, and then that creature that gets to be on the battlefield has to go back to your hand, which means you have to spend mana if you really wanted to put it back on the field. Um, that's cool. You're cheating stuff out but you're not cheating stuff out forever. And that's where I draw the line. I want stuff forever. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> well, and that's where I thought this deck was going to pop off a little bit more was, you know, essentially you could have that card forever because if you just blink it, then technically that piece of text isn't on that card anymore. True. But again, the issue is, you know, you're, you're just trying to do a lot with this deck and it's just, it's, it's really fun, but it it just like again, it has such a low ceiling that even if you look at the top six, you get a small creature, it just dies. And then if the other creature you were attacking with dies, then you're just left with Arthur, and then you don't have anything. Mm. So essentially, I, I almost wanted to build this deck as just like little one one tokens that could come in with haste and swing. But then I'm like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to look at the top six, and I'm just going to hit these small creatures. Yeah. So it's like you, you have this really weird balance of like putting in these small creatures to make sure you're able to get in with some damage with Arthur. And then you're like, okay, well, now let me put these big guys in. But that's like maybe six out of the hundred cards. And yeah. it's just it's it's just a little unfortunate. A lot of hoops. Hashtag play Winota. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to the grades then. Steven, we'll once again, start with you. Uh, I I will give this a C. I think it's middle of the road. I I almost want to go down to a D, but I think I'm just going to keep it at a C. Hmm. I'm actually going to go down to a D. I think uh, I said I was a Jeskai player. This is never something I'm going to play. It's just a little too slow. There's other cards that just do stuff better. I am going to go back to the middle of the road. I see its potential. I understand its flaws. It's still going to be a C for me. Well, Arthur Marigold Knight gets the average grade of a C. 
And that is going to do it for us today. If you guys liked that video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Comment down below. Do you guys agree with these grades? Maybe we missed a point completely. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. Um, these are just our grades. This is just if we would play them. So nothing is set in stone, but you can change our minds in the comment section. If you guys wanted to see, I've already said it multiple times, but all of the upgrades, check the links in the description. While you're down there, you'll find links to our social media accounts. That's TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, at Guys Magic for each one. Follow us on those as well. On the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. That is right. Thank you guys so much for your added support. If you guys wanted to check out what they're seeing, which is including all of the backup pre-con upgrades, also on our Patreon. Check the link in the description. Consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Hey, I hope you guys have a guys that magic day. Hey, bye-bye.